Good day, everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today, we'll be looking at this bone here, the scapula. We'll be looking at the scapula. So, this is the scapula. And this is how the scapula is positioned in the body. So, the scapula is defined as a triangular shaped bone or a triangular shaped flat bone that is situated at the posterior aspect of the thorax. So, you can see that the scapula is flat. It is a flat bone. It is triangular in shape and it lies on the posterior and the superior aspect of the thorax. So, the scapula helps to connect the upper limb to the thorax also. And it does that to form this joint here, known as the shoulder joint or the glenohumeral joint. So, having seen this, we will be looking at specific fissures that can be found in the scapula. So, here now we will be looking at the important fissures that can be seen in the scapula. So, this scapula is the left scapula. It is the left scapula. As you can see, this part is towards the left. So, it is the left scapula. So, first of all, we looking at the borders in the scapula. This part is known as the medial border of the scapula. This is it. It is known as the medial border of the scapula. This part is known as the lateral border of the scapula. Then, on the upper side here is the superior border of the scapula. So, these are the superior border of the scapula. The medial border, the lateral border, and the superior border of the scapula. Having seen the border, let's look at the angles. This angle here is known as the superior angle. This is the superior angle of the scapula. And here is the inferior angle of the scapula. So you can see the pointed part, the inferior angle and the superior angle. Then having seen this, let's go over to other fissures. So you see this elongation is known as the spine of the scapula. This is known as the spine of the scapula. So at the terminal end of the spine of the scapula, this fissure is formed, which is the acromia process or the acromion. So this acromia process articulates with the acromial facets of the clavicle to form a joint which is known as the claviculoacromia joint. So this is it. This is the clavicle and this is the acromial facet of the clavicle. You see how it articulates to form this joint here known as the claviculoacromia joint which is one of the joints of the upper limb. Then this is the coracoid process of the scapula. The acromial process, the coracoid process of the scapula. Then, having seen that, there is a depression on top of the spine of the scapula. There is a depression here, and this depression is known as the supraspinous fossa. Supraspinous, this is the spine. You get so spinous came from spine. So this is the supra above the spine. That is supraspinous fossa, which gave attachment to the supraspinatus muscle. Why this is the infraspinous fossa? And this gave attachment to the infraspinatus and also the teres minor muscle. Then if you turn the scapula, you see the subscapular fossa. 
here. This is the subscapular fossa. So these are the three fossa in the scapula. The supraspinous fossa, the infraspinous fossa, and the subscapular fossa. Then having seen that, on the superior border of the scapula, there is a depression here. This is known as the scapular notch or the suprascapular notch. This is known as the suprascapular notch here. Then having seen that, towards the lateral border, superiorly on the lateral border, you see this depression here. This is known as the glenoid cavity or the glenoid fossa. This fossa or cavity articulates with the head of the humerus to form the glenovenera joint or the shoulder joint. That is gleno from the glenoid cavity, humeral from humerus. So glenovenera joint is formed here. So for example, this is the humerus, this is the head of the humerus articulating with the glenoid cavity. You see how the shoulder joint is formed. Then, on top of the glenoid cavity, this is the glenoid cavity, this is the glenoid cavity here. Then on top here, there is a protrusion here. This is known as the supraglenoid tobacco, while the protrusion inferiorly is known as the infraglenoid tobacco. Then this is the glenoid cavity. Then this is the neck of the scapula. Surrounding the glenoid cavity is the neck of the scapula. So these are important fissures that can be seen in the scapula. So in a recap, I said that this is the left scapula, this is the lateral border, the medial border, and the superior border, the superior angle, the inferior angle here. Yeah. And I told us that this is the spine of the scapula. This elongation is the spine of the scapula. And towards the terminal end of the spine of the scapula, you see the acromia process or the acromion. Then I told us that this is the coracoid process, the coracoid process of the scapula. Then this is the glenoid cavity, the supraglenoid tobacco, the infraglenoid tobacco, the neck of the scapula. Then coming to the fossa, the supraspinous fossa the infraspinous fossa and the subscapular fossa. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I'll encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisholm Great. Follow me on all social media platforms, Learn with Chisholm Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends and comment on this video. Thank you very much.